Hello everyone, Oregon Moto John. Um, checking the air filter on my um, Honda Serif 300L after um, 1200 miles, and I really didn't have what I thought was heavy use. Uh, a lot of it was off road, but I didn't think it was overly dusty. But this air filter is dirty. Um, I'm usually pretty good about my maintenance, but compared to this new one, um, this is these are both Honda OEM filters this is from the factory new and or you know after 1200 miles and this is a new one so wow um i'm surprised i know somebody else made a video woodsman did a nice video on it but um after 1200 miles this is much dirtier than i would have expected so definitely be sure to check your air filter i'll show you how how to do that here in a second it's super easy um but i just wanted to i don't know wasn't planning on doing a video on this but it was so filthy i thought i need to need to make one so um, let me show you how to do this. Super easy. Changing the air filter on a Honda 300L couldn't be easier. Um, most of us are pretty good about oil changes, but it's easy to, and, you know, checking your chain and lubing it. It's easy to forget about your air filter because it's unseen. So this is super easy. <clears throat> you don't even need to take off the seat. You just need a 4 millimeter Allen screw, a Phillips driver, um, preferably the Japanese standard one um, works well and then um, just an air filter there's a part number there it's a Honda 17220-K1T-E10 and <clears throat> there's what it looks like it isn't doesn't appear to be serviceable to me it looks like you just have to replace it so take your four millimeter Allen driver here and you remove this this screw and this screw and then there's two tabs here that unsnap from the rubber grommet behind and then you just remove uh, a little i guess push pin plastic rivet there so let's remove these i've loosened them to make this a little quicker and then we remove this other one here okay and then i use a little you know, smaller Allen driver here to to get at this front one, but now this will pull out and it exposes this push pin here. And these are actually really easy to work with for the most part. You just push on the top of that. And yeah, let's see if I can get some light on there. Sorry about that. It's making it easier than I'm making it look. And then you're just gonna push on the top of that pin, it depresses. And then that will pull out. There it goes. It kind of makes a little click as it depresses. And then this just, you can get your fingernails under it or a plastic rivet puller and it just pulls out. And then that is loose here. And then it's just a matter of coming back Pulling on the plastic grommets here on the bottom. There's one there. There's one there and that just index is loose You can see there are those rubber grommets there um, I already had this off and you can see if you put some silicone grease on there on, on where that index is into the rubber grommets and onto the cover um, It'll just come off easier the next time you, you have it off. So that's just a little trick now it's just a matter of removing these five Phillips screws. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so we'll go ahead and remove those with a Phillips screwdriver now. And then we'll remove this cover. I like to wipe this off um, before I remove a cover. So I took a rag with some pledge or just, just any rag that will just get this clean. Because um, even if you wash the bike behind the cover, often will have dirt on it. So clean that so that when you remove the cover, you're not introducing matter to your air cleaner. Um, so we'll remove that cover and then it'll expose the air filter. Super easy to get to. So we have our five screws loose. There's the last one, pulling the cover off. Okay. And then this is what it looks like. Um, you can see there's a new air filter that I put in. I'll show you how the old one came out. You just release this snap here. And this snap here, getting it out is a little bit, or getting it back in is a little hard because you have to depress this in. Um, okay, so once you get this out, you pull it away, and then you're just gonna gently wiggle it. 
and there's some tabs in the back that will index out. I'll show you. I'll show you in a second what those look like. And it does come out easier if you have two hands, but with one hand it takes a little bit. So you can hear, see, here's those tabs that index in that when you put it in, and you can see back there, you can see where those little dog ears go. Um, I went ahead and took a clean rag and I wiped out this entire air box on the air filter side. And I also always look on the intake side. You can see it looks nice and clean up in there. And I did take a clean part of the rag and wiped around in there and there's nothing, there's nothing penetrated in there. So that's always a good little test to do because this is kind of your clean air side going to your engine. And this is kind of where the dirty air is coming in from your snorkel. So all that being said is, um, I'll show you how to put the new air filter in. It's not hard, but it's not as easy as I hoped it would be. So um, we're obviously gonna line up these tabs with where it indexes back there. So I'm gonna line those up. Okay, and you can kind of feel when you get them indexed in there, the air filter will start to, as you're moving it towards the engine, it'll start to index in and move, drop into the, to that. Okay, there. I can tell I'm kind of getting in there. Okay, I have it to where you can see it's dropping in on the back side. I got the tabs in. And now here, here's where it gets hard. You have to push on this tab as you're pushing the filter in that way. I'm pushing on this tab so that this ends up on the outside of this tab. And then these, these little tabs will just pop, pop over no problem. So um, I'm gonna push on that and it will it will go on. I'll see if I can get this on camera, but I may not be able to. Okay, so what you do is you push on this inner tab here and it, and it pops over. See now these tabs are over. That took me a while to figure that out. I know it made it look easy, but that took me, five, it took me longer than it should have to figure that out because this has to index under that. And I was trying to use a plastic uh, screwdriver and things to encourage that and I was gonna break something and then I figured you know, if I just use my thumb, I get this lined up. Then as I push this in and I push the air, fil the air filter that way, it snaps in. And now you can see it's nice and tight and it's fitting in there just the way it should be. I would always, you know, check that, make sure it's fitting on there, the backside's on there, and it looks, looks great. So as you can see, I just follow this filter. I don't know if this is going to show up right. Sorry, guys. Uh, this filter, if I follow it all the way back, I can see it sitting flush on the the mounting area. Oh, there's a little better shot. So that's just, I always just look in there to make sure I did, did indeed do it right, and I did. Um, so, okay, now it's just a matter of um, putting this cover on, doing everything in reverse order here. So I'll, uh, I'll put this cover on and put the screws in and put it just do it in reverse order and you do not need to remove the seat to do this so it's super easy two two uh allen screws um, a push pin rivet you pop that cover off take off your five screws pull the air filter put a new one on so i'd say the big thing is i would have an oem filter it waiting in the wings like that's what i did before i did this because i, I didn't plan on replacing this today I, this was supposed to be just an inspection and because my filter looked like that it it got a new filter. I'd hate to pull this off. And if I hadn't had a new filter, you know, waiting in the wings, uh, you know, it would have been a bummer to, you know, have this sitting apart like this or put it back together with a dirty filter. You might as well get the new filter in there. So get a new filter, you know, there's the part number there. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to, to get that on order. And um, yeah, get a new air filter in your bike and um, keep riding. So I hope this all finds you well. Appreciate everybody, and uh, I'll keep some videos coming on Hondas, KTMs, Huskies, and other miscellaneous things that I do with machines. So if you like that, and you're so inclined, like and subscribe, and I'll try to post things that are um, that are useful. But yeah, air cleaners, they're easy to forget about. We, we just don't see them, um, and, and so we just, they're kind of doing their work behind the scenes. But hey, this is, this is the air that's going into your motor, it's going through your carburetor, into your top end, into your cylinder, the top of your cylinder, and if it's dirty, it dust, and it's penetrated, you are sucking the junk into your engine. Um, you can see I got clean oil there, but 
that's just half the story. The other half of the story is you want you want um, a clean air filter and of course good fuel. You want good clean fuel. So um, you know, preferably non-ethanol. Unless you're riding a lot, then then you could get away with the other st the ethanol. But um, anyway, don't let that you know fuel sit in your bike too long. If it has ethanol, it can do bad things to your carburetor and gum up. But um, anyway, change your air filter. That was the purpose of this video. I'm at 1,200 miles on this bike. Um, it surprised me because I didn't feel like I had really done overly dusty roads. Uh, most of the riding was done in the summer, but a lot of it I was riding solo, so it wasn't like I was in, in the middle of a pack uh, or in the back sucking up a lot of dust. So um, make sure you check it. Oh, feel free to, um, like I said, like and subscribe. I've got a Rally Raid suspension um, on here. Um, Mr. Swick suspension put this the cartridge in for the front to me. Um, and I'm gonna try that out. Uh, the YSS rear was, was actually adequate. Um, and, and I had, was running the, the stock forks forever for 1,200 miles as well as the YSS rear shock. And I just wanted to see if I could get the ride a little plusher. So um, I'll let you know how, how that went. But the YSS shock actually, rear shock did actually get rid of the pogo action, but I was just trying to get this a little smoother. But I'll um, like and subscribe. I'll definitely be doing a video on that. I just put it on. I haven't ridden the bike yet, so I don't know how it works. It feels nice and plush to me, but uh, it, it's also higher. I went with the higher setup, so if I could do it again, I can already say I'd probably go with the standard height. But, but you know, once in a while you try something and um, you just got to move forward. And, and it'll be livable. Um, I like the idea of having a lot of travel, so I'm not upset about it. But anyway, that's another video coming. So um, have an awesome day. Keep riding and uh, hope you're all doing well. Take care. And just something to be um, thoughtful of is, you know, these are, this is, these screws are going into plastic. So when you're tightening these down, um, you know, when this bottoms out and it, it just snug, just stop. Don't, don't use Gorilla Strength on there. You'll, you'll definitely strip it out. And then when you're putting these screws on or tight, snugging them up, I would, I would kind of do a somewhat of a star pattern. This seat's down fine, but I would, you know, come over there and then I would tighten this one and then I would, you know, snug this one up and then I'd probably, you know, snug that one up and that way you, you're not getting that on, um, that on cockeyed. I mean, it's not like a cylinder head or anything like that, but just you want to make sure that that air box cover is sitting on there square. Actually, this one, I'm going to put that down. So you can kind of move around the cover a little bit. You know, tightening one down. Don't just snug one down all the way. And so, just just a thought. I'm sure you would have done that anyway, but just thought it was worth mentioning if you had never done it before. Another little tip with reassembly: I leave these rubber grommets unplugged, and I don't put any of these screws in. I put the rubber or the rubber, the plastic rivet in first, and then I snap in these indexed. Um, rubber, you know, attachments here. I snap that on. And then I put those last two screws in. So just order of operations there. Rivet first. Two plastic uh, rubber grommets. Snap those in and then put your screws in. And then you don't have to remove the seat. So that's, that's what I do.